اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد Brothers and sisters in the name of Allah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Um I'm doing this video recording to compliment uh five or six Facebook posts that I did yesterday uh, in response to a video that has gone viral where a popular social influencer uh gospeler and uh former aide to an ex president of this country <coughs> uh, Mr Reno Mokri where he discussed the muslim creed of tawhid uh, that is the belief that allah is one uh, without a partner without an associate uh, and compared it with uh, the trinitarian creed uh, which is uh, common with christians today the belief that uh, the godhead consists of three different personalities uh, god the father god the son and the holy spirit um mr mokri discussed the tawhid uh, admiringly <clears throat> he discussed it admiringly in such glowing terms that uh, earned him the backlash of christians who felt disappointed that he was speaking so well of a muslim thing of a muslim creed uh, not only that Uh, they were displeased that he chastised fellow Christians for having abandoned the creed of Tawhid, which his research has led him to discover as the original creed upon which Christ was before Allah lifted him up. Um, firstly, we commend the effort of Mr. Mokri for having the uh, independent mind and the spirit of research that made it possible for him to break away from the traditional dogmatic way of viewing things which is common with many of the people who claim to be the followers of Christ today even when uh, they exhibit beliefs that are obviously in contrast with what their holy book says um their attachment to church dogma often made it impossible for one to engage them in any fruitful discussion uh, he seems to be a departure from that and uh, for that i thank allah for him and uh, i pray that allah guide him to the ultimate truth um, his research uh, made him discover uh, some things which we confirm to be factual and that uh, it also led him to Uh, a conclusion that we think is erroneous and that is the basis of this uh, video recording that I'm doing um he mentioned the historical fact that the earliest muslims uh, migrated from medina to abyssinia where they lived uh, under the <coughs> abyssinian king uh and najashi king uh, the negus who was uh, upon uh, the teachings of christ and that probably um they learned to heed from the christians of that era so even though he he, he affirms that tawhid is a muslim principle and that uh the body of the followers of christ today have abandoned tawhid he establishes it as a muslim principle which he thinks muslims must have taken from the original teachings of christ and which they must have learned uh, for the first time when they migrated to abyssinia therein lies the big error um i i, I intend to pose a few questions from which i think Uh, any sincere mind would be able to see the danger of that uh, uh, supposition the first is uh, 
Uh, I noticed when Mr. Mokri mentioned the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he referred to him as Prophet Muhammad and even showered Allah's blessings on him saying Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Um, a typical Muslim would not use that expression for anyone unless he sincerely believes he's a prophet. So, uh, does Mr. Mokri believe that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a prophet? If he does, then it is uh, self-contradictory to believe he was a prophet and to suggest that he didn't know of Tawheed until his followers got to Abyssinia and then came back to fuse Tawheed into the creed of Islam. Because if the Prophet was not open to Tawheed, then the opposite of Tawheed is nothing but polytheism. And polytheism is nothing but paganism. It is heathen worship. Are you then suggesting that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was initially upon polytheism until his followers were sent to Abyssinia and then they came back with the creed of Tawheed, which according to Omokri, they must have learned from the Christians, the Orthodox Christians of Ethiopia. Are you suggesting that it was when they came back to Medina, they now fuse it into Islam, which would also mean that even Muhammad uh, was uh, not the one who taught his followers Tawheed, but the followers came to teach him Tawheed. I think this is uh, a big fallacy. Uh, for the information of Mr. Omokri, what caused the migration itself was the fact that the new religion called to by Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was opposed to the Arab, the pagan Arab way of worship, which was polytheistic. Uh, Muhammad had come to establish that Allah was one and that he could not be worshipped uh, in the multiple gods that were the carvings of the pagans of those days, that Allah the Almighty uh, would reveal himself through uh, the attributes uh, that are appropriate for him, which he sends to humans through messages uh, brought to them by messengers of whom he was one. So it was this strange idea of worshipping just one God that the Meccans could not tolerate and they began to prosecute his followers who were mostly uh, the weak members of the society. And it was that, that insistence on monotheism, on Tawheed, that, he ca that caused him to say they should migrate to a land, a land which Allah had revealed to him was uh, ruled by um, a king who was still upon the message of Christ, <coughs> giving them assurance that that king would harbor them and protect them, and that is what happened. So to think that the messenger of Allah himself was not open to heed when he sent his followers who were being persecuted for the Tawheed to Abyssinia, to think that he was not open to heed until they came back and taught to hate to him um, is a clear fallacy. Um, <coughs> I, I, I wondered what could have led Mr. Mokri to this. And uh, I discovered a striking uh, similarity between him and um, Charles Darwin, uh, the originator of the theory of evolution. Uh, both of them uh, did research starting with a wrong premise. Charles Darwin did his research at a time when the church and the scientific community were at war. Uh, scientists had come to the realization that a lot of their, their findings, a lot of scientific findings, were not admitted by the church. We all remember how... Galileo, Galileo was uh, sentenced to life in prison for believing that the earth rotates around the sun. So at that time, uh, I remember, Darwin uh, lived in the early stroke, mid-19th century. 
at that time, uh, the scientific society was uh, being alienated from the church, from the idea of a creator. So when Darwin did his research, he observed that several animal species exhibited characteristics, uh, developed organs which were suitable for their environments. So rather than reach the conclusion that God the Almighty programmed those animals to um, have characteristics that made them adaptable to whatever environment and circumstances they found themselves, because he was running away from the idea that someone created something, uh, he fell into the belief that it was a case of evolution, so much as to believe that even humans uh, came through a process of evolution starting from a single unicellular animal which adapted itself in different environments until it became uh, what we are today, humans. Uh, as illogical as that concept is, scientists believe in it. It's illogical because for any animal to adapt to an environment, it would need to have been programmed to know what it needs and how to bring it about. So it's an absurdity to think that any animal would just on its own develop organs and characteristics for an environment without someone having programmed it. But because they are running away from the idea that a supreme being created everything, uh, they say, no, uh, it is nature. So it just happened spontaneously. Um, I see Omokri <clears throat> falling into a similar error. He started on the premise that Christ is all and all. So if Christ was open to hate, nobody could have been open to hate before Christ. Yes, that is his error. And it is this we are calling attention to. Uh, we affirm as Muslims that Christ and Nabi Isa alayhi salatu salam was open to hate. Allah did send him with the message of Tawheed to his people, and he delivered the message. But we also believe that uh, the problem with his followers started when Allah the Almighty had raised him up, and then they fell into disputation as to the personality of Christ. Uh, there were three main groups. Those who said the Son of God had risen, and those who said, no, God incarnate had risen, and a third group who said, no, uh, the prophet of God, Isa, the son of Maryam, had risen. And these uh, were the, the, the ones upon the truth. It is the remnants of this group that the Negus was, uh, King and Najashi, who believed that Isa came to deliver the message of Allah to mankind. Unlike the ones who said it was either the Son of God or God incarnate. Um, Reno, uh, Reno Mokri's research has led him to discover uh, what Muslims have always said about uh, Christianity, which is that uh, as it is today, uh, it, it is uh, uh, a misrepresentation of the original teachings of Christ because uh, the, the majority of Christians in the world today believe in the Trinity and only a tiny section of Christendom uh, are Unitarian. Um, I've read a work by uh, God's Kingdom Society, the Jehovah's Witnesses, a book they compiled called uh, Mankind's Search for God, uh, where it is mentioned that uh, the first introduction of uh, the creed, the pagan, heathen creed of Trinity into Christianity started in the year 325 AD, just as uh, Omakri mentioned. And that it happened in um, uh, the city of Nicaea under the Byzantium Empire of that era. And it was an attempt to make Christianity, or rather the message of Christ, more acceptable 
for the pagan uh, rulers of the day. Um, uh, that being said, uh, I, I, I think Omokri uh, needs to uh, sit down more sincerely uh, and answer a few questions that I hope will, inshallah, guide him to realize that uh, he still has more work to do in his research. If Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was a prophet, uh, would he have been on other than Tawheed? Because anything other than Tawheed is polytheism, and polytheism is paganism. So, if he suggests that uh, the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was not uh, upon Tawheed until his followers came back from Abyssinia, then he's suggesting that even that Tawheed was taught to him by his followers, and that is uh, utter fallacy. Um, a further question I want him to consider is this. Um, before uh, Isa alayhi salatu salam uh, taught his people Tawheed, what were the previous prophets upon? Uh, the prophets mentioned in the Old Testament, uh, Abraham, Noah, Isaac, um, uh, and the rest of them. Were they all upon polytheism? Were they on uh, the Trinitarian belief? Certainly not. If they were upon polytheism, that is paganism. If they were not upon polytheism, that is Tawheed. So if they were upon Tawheed, what makes anyone think that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was one of the prophets of Allah and the last prophet of Allah, would not have known Tawheed as the prophets before him had known Tawheed? It is the premise that Jesus Christ uh, is all and all, which is a fallacy. It is that which must have led Omokri to think that uh, if Muslims uh, are open to Tawheed, uh, they must have learned Tawheed from Jesus Christ. I, I want to read a portion of the Quran that explains uh, this aspect better. Uh, Holy Quran, chapter 2, verse uh, 136, I think. Yes, chapter 2, verse 136 says... Um, Um, say, O Muslims, chapter 2, verse 136. Uh, A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim. rahman rahim um, Okay, let me just read the English translation. It says, Say, O Muslims, we believe in Allah and that which has been sent down to us and that which has been sent to Ibrahim, Ismail, Ishaq, Yaqub, and to Al-Asbat, the twelve sons of Yaqub, and that which has been given to Musa and Isa, and that which has been given to the prophets from their Lord. We make no distinction between any of them, and to him we have submitted in Islam. Uh, this verse um, tells us what the creed of the prophets before Isa, alayhi salatu was salam, was they were all messengers of the same Allah and they all came with the same message of Tawheed even if there were little differences in the laws given them they were essentially uh, calling people to the correct worship of Allah and that is Tawheed um, worshipping him without uh, associating any partners with him um, if Amokri thinks those previous prophets were open Tawheed then to imagine that Muhammad, who is another prophet, would not be open to heed and would not know it until someone taught it to his followers in Abyssinia is nothing but fallacy. If, on the other hand, uh, Mr. Mokri does not think Muhammad وسلم, was a prophet, then he would be guilty of having used the term prophet and having showered Allah's blessings on him 
only as a gimmick. Yes, as some dishonest finesse. Uh, a dishonest language used to prepare the minds of Muslims for the poison that he was about to feed them. It would mean that he used those words and didn't believe in them. Um, that does not speak well of him. Hmm? So, if he believed he was a prophet, then uh, what he ascribed to him of having been ignorant of Tawheed is not consistent with being a true prophet of Allah. And he, if he believes he was not a prophet, then referring to him as Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was simply dishonest. Um, in this, in this conclusion of uh, Mr. Omokri, uh, I think he is likable to uh, uh, Charles Darwin, uh, the um, uh, scientist who lived in. Uh, uh, early stroke, mid 19th century. Uh, Darwin was a biologist and a sailor, an English sailor and biologist who had traveled extensively uh, gathering animal species, studying them to understand the origin of life. Um, if Darwin had not been on a wrong premise, his research could have led him to recognize God as the creator and the fashioner. But Darwin's work was at a time when the church and the scientific community were at war. They were at loggerheads because scientists of that era had come to the conclusion that uh, the clergy were often uh, upon positions that were inimical to science, positions that were proven wrong by science. And that alienated a lot of them from church and the belief in God. Uh, we all remember how uh, Galileo Galilei was uh, sentenced to life in prison for believing that the earth rotated around <coughs> the sun rather than the belief held by the church then that the earth was the center of the universe and the sun uh, rotated around the earth. So the scientific community then had been alienated so much so that when Darwin made his uh, research and gathered all the facts, uh, he could not ascribe his observation to a supreme being that was behind creation. Rather, uh, he came to the conclusion wrongly that what he had observed on uh, different species of animals <clears throat> was that each animal... Uh, exhibited characteristics that made it uh, adaptable to the environment and circumstance in which it lived. So he came to the conclusion that those animals uh, developed those characteristics on their own. They evolved. And he even went on to say that even humans uh, are a high degree of uh, evolution that started with a single unicellular animal. In other words, there was nothing like creation. Uh, there was nothing like <clears throat> uh, God creating different types of animals. At the same time, uh, they all started as a single animal with a single cell which adapted itself in different circumstances and different environments until mankind evolved. It's illogical because for anything to keep changing and keep adapting to its environment, you would expect it to have been programmed to do so. But this Ill illog illogicality was accepted by scientists because uh, they were fed up with the church. So they had been alienated from the idea that God uh, was in charge. <clears throat> Similarly, I think Mr. Omokri uh, started his own research with a wrong premise, and that is the premise that Christ is all and all. So if Muslims uh, are open to Tawheed, and everybody knows that, that Muslims are the only ones known to be are truly open to Tawheed in the world today. Uh, if Muslims are open to Tawheed, 
they could not have known to heed except through Christ. And having established that um, Muslims came in contact with the earliest Christians, which is incontrovertible, he concluded that, yes, they must have learned to heed in Abyssinia, and that is the error. Uh, the verse I just quoted from the Quran now confirms that to heed is the main message of all the prophets of God, starting from Adam, alayhi salatu salam, who was the first prophet, up to uh, Muhammad, who was the last prophet. They all taught the message of Tawheed. The Quran tells us that each time a messenger brought the message of Allah to his people, um, they either killed the prophet or falsified his message after him. And that's exactly what happened to uh, Christianity. It is good that someone like Omokri has confirmed what Muslims have always claimed, that uh, Christianity as we know it today is a gross misrepresentation of the original message of Christ. Here is Omokri proving it with his research. He has proven that uh, the Trinitarian ideology is alien to the original teachings of Christ. It wasn't known for the first three centuries. So Muslims are not derogatory when they say the book with the Christians today, which they refer to as the book of God, uh, consists of, yes, uh, some of the original authentic teachings of Christ and the teachings of men who, which found them the, their way into the Bible. So, uh, Mr. Mokri, I, I beg Allah the Almighty uh, to guide you ultimately to open your mind to consider these things I call your attention to. Uh, what the Quran tells us um, about Christ uh, makes us better believers in Christ than Christians who claim to follow him. We see them as people who have replaced the paganism that Christ came to counter with another form of paganism because the worship of anything besides Allah is nothing but paganism. The paganism of the days before Christ uh, probably was uh, paganism in the form of worshipping idols and stones. They have replaced it with paganism in the form of worshipping uh, a man created by Allah and that is Jesus Christ. So when they refer to him as God and worship him, they have replaced paganism with paganism. Uh, I beg Allah the Almighty to uh, let anyone who listens to this to open his mind to do a more sincere research about the matter raised by Mr. Omokri. Um, Muslims believe that uh, after Isa delivered his message, as Allah had sent him with it, uh, honestly, um, we all know the circumstances that led to the attempt of the, the Jews to crucify him, uh, to kill him. Uh, the Quran tells us that he was raised up alive. Uh, and thereafter, his followers fell into disputation regarding his personality. Uh, the Quran says they neither killed him, nor were they even able to crucify him. He was neither killed not crucified. Um, text of a hadith explained that his followers fell into disputation after he was raised up and they fell into three different groups. A group referred to him as the son of God. A group referred to him as um, God incarnate. And a third group correctly referred to him as man, uh, the messenger of God who had come to deliver the message of God, the message of Tawheed. Uh, it is uh, people who remained on this correct uh, creed uh, that we believe were the sincere Christians uh, of the type that lived in the era when the messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, sent his followers to go to Abyssinia to meet the Negus. So these were remnants of people who believed in the correct message of Isa alayhi salatu salam. And wherever such people were found, if the message of 
Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam got to them, they had no choice but to embrace Islam, knowing that uh, Jesus Christ himself had foretold the coming of another prophet who would complement his message. So I beg a love for Mr. Rene Omokri, Rene Omokri, um, to see this rejoinder as an attempt to assist him to move further and closer to the truth. Um, the Quran, chapter 15, verse 9, Surah Al-Hajr, verse 9 says, uh, uh, Verily, it is we who have sent down the zikr of the Quran, and surely we will guard it against corruption. Now, to understand the context in which this verse speaks, uh, I just mentioned that uh, the messages of the earlier prophets uh, often got corrupted. Uh, some of them were killed, their messages were corrupted, and that is exactly what happened to the message of Christ. It became corrupted to which Mr. Mokri himself has confirmed. When the Quran was revealed, it was revealed to correct the corruption that had happened to the message of Christ. And this is why Allah in this verse pledges that it is we who have sent down the Quran and we will guard it against corruption. Mr. Mokri should find time to read the Quran, uh, chapter 15, verse 9, and then ask himself, what kind of human author would be so audacious as to boast and beat his chest that the book he had written, that is, if uh, Muhammad وسلم, had been the author of the Quran, what kind of human author would boast that the book he had written would remain uncorrupted for eternity? This pledge was made over 1,400 years ago. Despite the enormous enmity that Islam has encountered in the world, and I don't think any other religion has more enemies than Islam. Despite the upheavals it has passed through over history, uh, the Quran remains unadulterated, uh, confirming that this pledge has been uh, made true by Allah. So, could a human being who authored a book of his own volition have made this pledge? So, uh, these are challenges for Mr. Omokri to consider. Um, the bottom line is that Tawheed uh, was taught by Prophet Muhammad وسلم, just as Isa and the previous prophets of Allah had taught it to the people. So they did not learn Tawheed in Abyssinia. The danger of not saying anything about this is that I noticed in that video that uh, Mr. Mokri was uh, particularly uh, refined in his use of language. Um, he, he spoke well of Tawheed. Uh, he mentioned uh, 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 the fact of migration to Abyssinia. Um, he, he, he referred to the Messenger of Allah and uh, uh, showered blessings on him. Uh, all of which are likely to present him as a balanced individual to his audience. And uh, with that belief that he's balanced, they're likely to swallow everything he said, hook, line, and sinker. So this made us think uh, there, there is need to correct uh, his misconception, uh, the fallacy that Tawheed uh, was fused into Islam after it was gotten from the earliest Christians. No, Tawheed is the creed uh, taught by Allah to all his prophets and sent with them for mankind from the very, very beginning. Sallallahu ala Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. The Guidance Facebook page. Follow like and share.